Hey everybody, Brian Engelman here, 2018 Winter NAM, Anaheim, California at the Anaheim Convention Center. Walking in the doors, who do we see? We see this gentleman right here. What do we know him from? We know him from the History Channel. We know him from Fade to Black Radio. We also know him from Coast to Coast AM. This is Jimmy Church. Jimmy, how are you doing today, sir? Yeah, awesome. Brian, thank you. So what brings you guys here? I've done 21, we're guessing 21 NAM shows. We grew up in Ohio, so we used to go to the Nashville show. How many years in a row? Five, six, seven? Right. Then we went to Anaheim, I'm sorry, we went to Austin. We went to Indianapolis, and we've done 13 out here. So on top of Nashville, about 21. Yeah, I'm, I, I think this is like number 50 for me. Uh, my first NAM show was 1984. Wow. So do the math there, right? This is 2018. Plus, plus Nashville, New Orleans. Uh, I never went to Indianapolis, my hometown. But uh, oh, that's yeah, hometown. yeah. Hometown. It's a nice city, but it, it was, was it. Did it feel like NAM? It didn't feel like NAM. Well, Nashville, as great as it, you know, and consistent. There's nothing like this this is just it's absolutely insane it's massive anybody who's everybody and it is one of these events where you literally turn the corner you have no idea who you're gonna find yeah, that's right and now I'll tell you what's really amazing to me is I know that I have a large audience I do but Nam, and I'm talking about radio and television but it's a conspiracy audience and it's it's not this the Nam show is for industry people only right, right? so when I say that I'm going to be at the NAMM show, come out and hang out, the odds of somebody, to me, in my mind, listening to the show that is also going to NAMM and right. is making mental note, let's go run into Jimmy over at the Tascam booth, right? And it happened. You go, what is that, three people? Is that going to be seven people? It but you're surprised. Lot. It was a lot. And it was just a humbling experience to go through um, because I've always pushed with, uh, with everything that I do, whether it's, it's Coast to Coast or Fade to Black or History Channel, I always push what I know, which is the music industry. I appreciate music, I love my heavy metal and all music, but I talk about it a lot on the show. Last night, I was on Coast to Coast last night. I worked till three o'clock in the morning. I'm here today. But last night on the bumper music on Coast, I'm able to live my musical roots and, right. and do that, right? So, and then I'm, I'm here today and to have that marriage of music and conspiracy, right? Because if you, if you think about it, when you do a radio show, what you want to find is yourself and then you will attract people that are like you. You don't want to be somebody else. You don't want to fake or, you know, no, just be yourself. So what is me? Me is Eddie Van Halen, Dimebag Daryl, the New World Order, and UFOs. So if I can get all of that, right, in one show, then would I attract people like that? And as it turns out, that's exactly the world that we live in. You got to Van Halen. Have you ever talked to Sammy Hagar about all of his UFO stuff? I, I, absolutely. And I would Red love, Parker. yes, I would love his thing you know, one of the greatest voices, right? A legend. But when he wrote about the download, right, from the UFO above his house and this this cable that went to, and, and I'm thinking that when he says this and he writes this, that resonates with his fans. And then his fans turn around and seek out people like me. And then they find out, listening to my show, uh, that I love music too. And it's just like, we can all get along here. And that's, that's part of the success of all of this. Music is always one of those things where you can dig an album and you don't have to agree on much else. Um, we did a man on the street, and I'd be curious to get your thoughts. The most real musician of all time, the, the person who spoke the most truth to you, the person that, that, that was in the band, the, the, the band that put together an album. When I say the most real musician of all time, what comes to mind? Wow. It's almost a five-way tie. And, and I'll tell you why it's a five-way tie. Um, I've got to go Jeff Beck, Yngwie Malmsteen, Steve Vai, Eddie Van Halen, Jimmy Page. And then there's Randy Rhodes, Dimebag Daryl. 
there you know you know what a, I mean um, it, it's yes and it's so I, I say so I do this thing where I say like um, who's the best drummer of all time and I you know everybody will give you a thing and I'll say no you're it's in a pyramid it's the top of the pyramid when you're upper echelon right. you can that's a great exclusive group of 20 right. 30 right. you can be totally different styles but you're in the club right right it's so how do you out. how do you go and compare Stevie Ray Vaughan right. with Randy Rhodes Right, right. You can't. You just can't do it. Right. So. So which fine. which which artist spoke to you the most growing up in your developmental years, then? Uh, like like an artist that really meant the most to you, maybe in your teens into early twenties. It just it's a classic go-to album. Yeah, two, two, and that's Black Sabbath and Van Halen, and for totally different reasons. Um, but I have said many many times, Desert Island. I got no choices. What do I listen to? It would be Van Halen 2 and Black Sabbath Sabotage. As cra two totally different things going on there, right? The hair band, guitar histrionics, and the heavy metal icon, you know, so uh, two totally different things. But I got so much from both of those albums that's not taking away from Jeff Beck, Blow by Blow, Led Zeppelin 2, you know, Led Zeppelin 4. The, you know, those are, but for me, um, what moved me were those. And I, okay, now, so saying that, we're at yes. the NAMM show. I think the unsung hero, not only for my life, but for so many people in this building, is Frank Zappa. Frank Zappa was not in the mass sales, that's not what he was about. But what he was about was conspiracies, the mass media being controlled by the man and being able to get that into some pretty sophisticated songs right. and and really influence the movers and shakers that are here at this show. And that, so that's somebody, it's, would you, would how you do you pick? Zappa? Would you say Zappa's a little bit, has a little Andy Kaufman in him, kind of trolling the masses? I think he, uh, I think Andy Kaufman was Frank Zappa. Just kidding. <laughs> no, I'll tell you. Yes, no, you're absolutely, the, the message that it's a blunt, in-your-face, so cartoonish and, and comedic. The, the point that you bring up is an interesting one. The message that Andy Kaufman and Frank Zappa had in the 80s, 70s and 80s, about the man, about being controlled, about life being an artificial reality, Today in 2018, we talk about this all day long. All artificial time. reality, artificial intelligence. Are we in a hologram right Are now? Are we in a hologram? Pa parallel worlds, the Mandela effect. Can I tell you? But they were talking about this 35 years ago. They let me over the Peiste, and I always pronounce it wrong, Peiste, it's foreign. But they let me hit the gong. Right. And when it was over, because they have uh, sound police, if you're too loud, they come over and they, they, they chastise do. you. Yes. But I, they let me do it. And they said, how was it? I said, I feel like I entered a parallel dimension. I just opened a portal to another universe. Something just occurred with this symbol larger than me. There's something to this. I don't know what, but something occurred there. I'll tell you a funny story. I'll make it quick. My first NAMM show, 1984. And I come in, never been, you know, so overwhelming, you know, a couple hundred thousand this people. And, and it's, it's the, the, the concoction, the, the, right. So anyway, so I walk into the drum hall. And I walk in, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. I'm not quite panic attack, but almost there. And somebody hits this gong, right? And I left planet Earth, right? And so... Okay, so I'm not the only one no, that experienced no, it. This, this is what happened. I almost passed out. There's no place to sit, right? Oh, right? right. Well, there, people are sitting here, but inside the hall, you stand. And I'm looking for something to lean on. I need a moment, right? Yeah. I get lost. I I don't know where I am. Load up as a third. It all happened to me. Life. You're not the only one. Okay. There's there's people in there right now in another dimension. I think something like that. Ha I would anyway. That's a whole other story for another day. Two quick questions, then I want to hear about the sponsors that you came out for. Sure. The second question, following up on the man on the street, was which artist had the most impact politically on the globe? If you could narrow it down to somebody that was able to play their music and have a message and it actually, the, the ripple effect, the butterfly effect of what they were doing, what their fans came to, to see and I where that's they... that's easy. That's an easy answer. You too. You too. You too. Because we've heard, we've heard different things. Bob Marley, we've heard sure. John Lennon. Yes. But, but tell me about you too. You too. Uh, you too. Uh, 
you two started off with songs like uh, Sunday Bloody right. Sunday and New Year's Day. Right. Very politically oriented activist songs, very rowdy right. for their time. But they were embraced by mass media, MTV. Apple, and back right? then, the Apple commercials. Uh, the well, that was later, but right, yeah, course, yeah. But, but you two from the beginning was a part of this new generation of mass media and, and, and making videos and MTV, and they have embraced that technology ever since. Oh. So that they have no problems with getting their politically oriented messages out there. Um, uh, right after 9-11 happened, I used to work with you too, right? And uh, I worked for a company called Ashdown, who was here. I've got to go see them in a minute. And of course, uh, Clayton was one of our endorsees. And so I would go to all of their shows here in Los Angeles. And when 9-11 happened, they didn't cancel the tour. There were no flights, there was nothing going on. And they actually, on the on a screen, showed everybody's name that died in 9-11. Uh, on the planes, everything, right? And in Pennsylvania, in right, the uh, right, right. And that was something that they could have ignored, right? It was a very emotional time for the country. Right. But you two took the opportunity with this multimedia presentation at their shows uh, to speak about this. And I think that they've always uh, thrown caution to the wind about political stances, whatever, what, whatever it may be. And they've done it through multimedia. So I would say that you two is uh, maybe, yeah, they even could be the most famous, but certainly the most successful. Yeah, we actually walked up. There's a U2 cover band playing up on the third or fourth floor or something. We were a little duped at first, thinking it might have been them. Um, so, so 2018, what is what is your take on, on the climate politically in our country? Do you think we're moving in the right direction? Are we off track? Where music is trying to steer us in a good direction, where do you think we are and where we're headed? I think that we have to... Uh, write it out that's whatever it is whatever side of the fence you're on it doesn't matter you have to write it out it's a hard road for either even if you're in the middle um you have to ride this out i don't know how it's gonna end i i really really don't i i've always said that um as americans as earthlings we need to stay positive and think about ourselves first. So whatever your political views are, you need to put those aside and think about America first. That is our concern. Let's get through this. I, I, I don't know how it's going to play out. I really don't. I, um, I get this question all the time. I literally speak to millions of people a day. Yeah, you do. Right? Coast and I, your yes, show, and I, got I, wide reach. I need to be very, very careful here. Measure about the, because yes, I, know. I I don't know. I I, I I don't know. We have to write it out and we're in it together either way. We're we're in it together and let's just try to show support for our country, whether you approve or disapprove of the politics side of it. And that's my take. Got it. Uh, and I'll appreciate that. We have 90 seconds left running out of tape. Tell us about your sponsors really quick. What brought you out and where they can check out more about what you're doing with them. Yeah, um, I have, uh, uh, I'm an artist for Tascam. So our show, we use uh, Tascam gear top to bottom. And so I'm here, to, you know, I was here today to support Tascam, of course, but our relationship is really strong. Um, I have a relationship with uh, Fender Guitars. Um, they, uh, I'm a musician, so uh, I'm here to support them too as well. And also, I've looked at a couple of other things, and one of the companies that I think we're going to start a relationship with is a Presonus, which again, uh, for me, I'm a, vol uh, I'm a host. My voice is important. I need to have the right front end, tube gear, tube compressors, tube EQs. And to have that at the front end is uh, the next change I'm making. Excellent. Thank you for your time, Jimmy Church. B. Appreciate Thank you, it, brother. It's good to see you. Dude, indeed. Peace out.